Ibrahim Hooper is joining us. He is with the Council of American Islamic Relations. Good morning. Thank you Good very morning. much for being with us. Thanks for having me. When you saw this <coughs> story Tuesday morning, what was your reaction? Well, it's a cumulative effect. You have the issue of the detainees still out there. You had the issue of the so-called voluntary interviews uh, of the uh, thousands of legal visa holders. You have the issue of airline profiling of, for instance, the Secret Service agent who was uh, kicked off a plane. And now you have this, and it just it's a cumulative effect that can create the impression that uh, Muslims and Arab Americans are being singled out. According to this report, the Justice Department already has inquiries on about 6,000 young men of Middle Eastern descent who are in this country, and the overall total could be over 300,000. How do they keep track of these individuals, and, and what legal authority does the Justice Department have? Well, that's the thing. They, they haven't kept track of them. Uh, usually what happens is somebody comes into the country, uh, is at one address, but people don't stay at the same address. So when uh, mail comes to them, uh, giving them instructions from the government, you're you're uh, be being deported, whatever, um, they're someplace else and they usually don't receive it and they're working and, you know, generally benefiting the society as best they can. But if these individuals are in this country illegally, doesn't this government or any government yeah. have a responsibility and the authority to do what the Justice Department is now doing? Obviously, anyone who breaks the law should uh, be subject to the penalty of law. If, if people are, uh, are subject to deportation, they can be deported. That's not the problem. But it's singling out uh, for selective prosecution based on race and ethnicity. I mean, just think about it. If a county in the United States had a thousand bench warrants out on traffic violations, and they said, well, we're only going to go after African American uh, violators right now, and we'll go after the white people later. I mean, this is clearly unconstitutional. But, you know, somehow it's perceived as being okay now in the aftermath of the 9 11 attacks. What are you hearing from your colleagues on this? Well, I mean, there's concern in the Muslim community, there's apprehension, there's the growing perception that there's like a two tier legal system one set of laws for everybody else, and one set for Muslims and Arab Americans. I'm saying that this is a perception right now. Uh, we're not saying that's a, the actual fact, but all of these policies can lead us in that direction. Ibrahim Hooper will be joining us for about 40 minutes. Our phone lines are open, 202-737-0001 for Democrats, 202-737-0002 for Republicans, <clears throat> and 202-628-0205 if you're a member of a third party. Is this racial profiling? I mean, these are difficult times, and we would like to, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt, and we would like to uh, sacrifice like all Americans. But at some point, you have to say, well, you know, it's not a good idea to single people out based on their religion, ethnicity, and race. As a way of background, tell our audience a little bit about you and the organization that you represent. Uh, I'm a communications director for CARE. We're about uh, eight years old now. We started in 1994. Uh, we do a lot of anti-discrimination work, anti-defamation work. I mean, we've been called the Muslim NAACP to kind of put us in, the, in a certain category. How many members do you have and where does your money come from? Um, we're not really a membership organization. We're more of a service organization and our money comes from uh, donors, uh, private donors, no governments, anything like that. And how did you get involved with them? Uh, I was one of the founding members. Um, I had been doing this kind of work on the local level on a volunteer basis uh, for a number of years, the same kind of work, and we, we developed a pattern of how to defend civil rights, how to do anti-defamation work, and uh, so we just took it to the national level, and we've been uh, quite successful. From your perspective, what's changed before and after September 11th on how Americans view Muslims or anybody of Middle Eastern descent? Well, it's interesting. We had, of course, the backlash. We recorded more than 1,500 cases of anti-Muslim backlash after 9-11. But then uh, studies come out saying that the opinion uh, Americans hold of Islam and the American Muslim community has gone up since 9-11. So you have some, uh, some uh, contradictions in these kinds of things. We've had tremendous support from other people in the society. At the same time we were reporting the incidents of anti-Muslim backlash, we would report also, um, you know, a Muslim family going into a restaurant in West Virginia and other people in the restaurant picking up the tab. 
because of the feeling of solidarity. A lot of these kind of good stories came out after 9-11 as well. So bottom line, when you hear the, the INS is looking at over 300,000 illegal immigrants in this country and a deportation program that is now being instituted by the Justice Department, your reaction is? Uh, concern. Um, we, of course, as we say, anybody who breaks the law should be subject to the law, uh, but they shouldn't be singled out based on race and ethnicity. It creates apprehension in our community. Let's get to your phone calls and also direct you to the CARE website, which stands for the Council on American Islamic Relations. It's C-A-I-R hyphen net dot org. By the way, the website is also hyperlinked to C-SPAN's website at cspan.org. Our first call comes to us from Falls Church, Virginia, on the Republican line. Good morning. Good morning. Ibrahim, I think we just got to cut to the chase here, partner. America was attacked recently by Middle Eastern terrorists, young men of Islamic faith. And uh, every attack that has been levied on the U.S. so far has been uh, by terrorists, has been by such people that was very rare exceptions dating back to the 1980s and that's who we are after now now it's unfortunate and probably unfair that innocent muslims are going to be searched looked at more closely uh, asked uh, questions by the police but it's not unconstitutional and it's not wrong it's the right thing to do right now uh... i, I think our heart goes out to people who uh... who feel slighted and, and and uh, are hit by the unfairness of it all, but it's not unconstitutional and it's not wrong. Jonah Goldberg did a fine piece yesterday in the National Review Online about this, and uh, y'all might want to pull it up and read it. Oh, it's I read his stuff, have. yes. W w Caller, where is his uh, latest article? Is it from the uh, It Fox was News the uh, National Goldberg Review. File. National Review? Goldberg file yesterday in National Review, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, I mean, this seems to be a, an emotional response to the horrific attacks, and it's, you could see it as natural in many ways, but it was also natural almost uh, to when uh, the Japanese fleet attacked Pearl Harbor, you say, well, it was Japanese people who attacked Pearl Harbor, it makes perfect sense to round up Japanese Americans and put them in camps. At the time, it seemed logical. Looking back on it, it wasn't the right thing to do. I think this is a similar situation. It, it seems like something you should do, but I think when we look back on this through the, uh, the lens of history, I think it's going to be something that we regret doing. Next call, Ann Arbor, Michigan, for Ibrahim Hooper. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Hooper, um, uh, a couple of months back, there was an op-ed page in the New York Times uh, by Tom Friedman, mm -hmm. and uh, his, uh, uh, his, his main point that he was making is Muslims are capable of living in a democracy, and the real issue, uh, if you look at the Muslim societies, you know, uh, with so much turmoil, uh, and all of those are non-democratic. However, if you look at the countries where they are living in democratic, like Turkey, Bangladesh, uh, uh, he also mentioned India, uh, I think Mali, um, there wasn't this uh, uh, a large number of uh, marches in favor of Osama bin Laden. So the real need of the Muslim societies um, seems to be democracy, education, and so forth. Um, what I would like to ask you is this. Uh, if you look at the Christian societies, you know, they're largely educated, largely democratic, uh, many of them extremely well-developed and, and rich. In the Muslim world, if you take away Saudi Arabia, there really isn't that much wealth, maybe Kuwait, okay, and that mainly comes from oil. And I think uh, the real reason for this is the lack of good education in those countries. Yeah, th there's many problems in the Muslim world. Uh, there's poverty, political instability, uh, uh, political repression. Uh, the caller mentioned Turkey. Well, 
I mean, I, I'd have a problem with Turkey. In America, when a Muslim woman comes to us and says she was fired from her job for wearing a headscarf, we get her job back. And the law supports her. If that same Muslim woman wants to go to university in uh, Turkey with her headscarf, she can't go. She's prohibited. So even in countries that are being put forward as the model of democracy, there are real problems. Next call is from Brooklyn, New York. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Is that, yeah, yeah, hi. Uh, listen, I just wanted to say to Mr. Hooper, uh, with respect, but I, I feel very disappointed, basically, in the Arab-American community and actually the Arab community worldwide. I'm I not an Arab-American, by the way. I'm sorry? I'm not Arab-American, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah. Well, well, may I ask where you're from? I'm, uh, my ancestors were French voyageurs and uh, immigrants from uh, Scotland. Oh, okay, but nevertheless, you seem to represent um, a, 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 certainly a, an, an Arab um, group. Muslim uh, group. A Muslim group, I'm sorry. I, I happen to be Jewish, and while I'm in the Jewish uh, uh, community, we tend to speak with subtlety and with caring about the Palestinians, uh, even in the West Bank. Subtlety and, even, and caring about the Palestinians? Yes, and, yes let me just make the <laughs> statement, okay? Even the West Bank, and even, and even if we happen to be um, very pro-Israel, I don't see the same type of uh, hot, hot rending and decent feeling towards the Jewish people in the Middle East. It seems to me that any problem in the Middle East is always blamed on Israel. It could, be, uh, you know, for example, uh, in Kuwait, there was something like uh, 250 to 300 Palestinians thrown out of Kuwait after the um, 1991 war. 300,000, yes. Excuse me? 300,000, yes. 300,000. We don't hear much about <clears throat> that and much breastfeeding about, oh, the poor Palestinians, and look what the Kuwaitis did to them, but somehow it's the Israelis, oh, what they did to the Palestinians. If the situation were reversed, I hate to think about the bloodletting that would happen to the Jews. Uh, as as you know, most of when the when the Palestinians have had problems in other countries, they have been massacred, and the Jews have done their best not to do that type thing. And I'd I'd like to see I'd really like to see you guys get up and protest very very vociferously what happened to the Palestinians in Kuwait. And in fact, I'd like to see the Council on Arab American Affairs get serious, for example, very serious about what Muslims are doing to, say, the Sudanese uh, blacks. And I don't, I don't see you guys doing that. I'll stop you there. Thanks for the comments. We'll get a response. Well, actually, uh, perhaps we should consider why there were Palestinians in Kuwait in the first place, why there are Palestinians in uh, Syria, in Jordan, in Lebanon, to be subject to uh, mistreatment. They're there because they were kicked out of their homeland. So that's the basic problem, and the, and the problem continues today in the form of the occupation. So these are the issues we have to deal with. And as far as Sudan, horrible situation in Sudan, civil war, uh, human rights abuses on all sides. Uh, to say that uh, 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 some Sudanese are black and others are not, this is one of those myths that's been repeated often. Uh, any Sudanese of any type, northern, southern, if they walk down a street in America, would be regarded as uh, African, African American. We're talking about an announcement earlier this week by the Justice Department uh, to begin questioning and begin the process of possi possibly deporting initially between five to 6,000 young men of Middle Eastern descent between the ages of 18 to 33 who entered the U.S. on non-immigrant visas and are now considered to be here illegally. Overall, an estimated 300 to 350,000 in this country of Middle Eastern descent that the Justice Department says could be here potentially could be deported, although they say that they're going to begin with this initial number of five to 6,000. That's what we're talking about. Next call is Jacksonville, Florida, on the Republican line. Good morning. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me on. Uh, first of all, I will say this. I believe that any time you take one select group, and that's the only group you're going to investigate, you stop prosecuting the guilty. You start persecuting the people. That's my first thought. I've been a Republican my whole life. I have also am an immigrant. I'm a naturalized citizen. So I know how hard it is to become an American citizen. And I truly believe that if you want to start dealing with this problem properly, you pass the Patriots Act that says if you're illegal, if you're a traitor, or if you're a criminal from a foreign country, you have no more rights in this country. What I strongly suggest is that they've got these 350,000 people who are here illegally, 
that are past expired visas and all other documentation. And they're, they, 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 this is the spectrum of the whole world, of all the people in this world that come to America. Put them in the New York Times on Sunday. List them all, the country they come from, and just say under the Patriots Act, if you support, harbor, or employ these people, you are breaking federal law and persecute them to the fullest extent. And I, don't, I do mean persecute them because if you're not going to treat all people equal, you're just persecuting small people, not all the people. Thank you, caller. Albany, Kentucky on the Democrats line. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd just like to ask your guest, if these people have overstayed their visas, then how is it uh, unconstitutional to, uh, to even profile them because they don't have any rights? Well, people always have rights to due process and to uh, international law, civil liberties, uh, norms. Uh, you always have these rights. Uh, and again, we go back to the example. Take away that they're Arab or Muslim. Uh, let's say they were African American. How would it sound if, uh, you know, the there was a group of people who had committed crimes but you were only going to go after the African Americans and leave the rest alone that would strike people as being wrong but somehow because it has to do with Muslims and Arab Americans you know it seems to be something that is logical and we just don't believe that's the case there is this perspective from the Washington Times op-ed page an editorial cartoon that has a reference to the Christmas Day event at BWI Airport that Arab American uh, Secret Service agent of Arab American descent who was questioned and then removed from that American Airlines plane. Paperwork? Question mark. Who needs paperwork? I'm a Secret Service agent. Can't you tell by my belligerent, hostile, loud, and abusive behavior? Yeah, I mean, this is an outrageous uh, cartoon. If you look at what he's holding, they, the cartoonist has him holding uh, what could appear to be a videotape, and on it, uh, I, I called an Arabic speaker this morning, and it says something to the, ex, uh, the effect of exclusive to Al Jazeera, the uh, network uh, cable, or the satellite network in Qatar. And uh, they tell me this was often labeled on tapes that came from Osama bin Laden. So I hope the implication here isn't that this uh, agent is somehow uh, related to Osama bin Laden. I mean, that would be completely outrageous. But the Washington Times has a history of this kind of uh, defamatory attacks on Muslims and Arab Americans. There were, according to some reports with this particular <clears throat> case, this Secret Service agent who did have a book of Middle Eastern history in his briefcase. He did have a gun. There's a question about whether or not he initially identified himself as a Secret Service agent. Where yeah. do you think this is going to lead? I, I mean, uh, he was doing something that hundreds of law enforcement officers do every day. They travel on planes uh, armed. There's procedures for it. Uh, he did all the paperwork. He did it a number of times, in fact. Uh, he jumped through all the hoops, and this wasn't sufficient. And the, the book they found, The Crusades Through Arab Eyes, it's a college textbook. I was assigned it myself in courses on Middle Eastern history. Uh, and if I go on a plane and I want to read my Quran, am I going to be thrown off because it's a suspicious book. I mean, it's ridiculous. Our email address is journal at cspan.org. If you can't get through on our phone lines, we encourage you to send us your comments or questions. We'll get to them, including this from Dave White. I would like to hear Mr. Hooper say that he condemns the radical fundamental Muslims who support the terrorists who attack the U.S., Israel, and Europe. I uh, condemn the radical fundamentalist terrorists who attack innocent civilians in uh, any place in the world. This is another question from a viewer in Virginia who says, has your organization stopped supporting terrorist organizations such as the Hamas and the Hezbollah with which they are associated? Is this the kind of when did you stop beating your wife kind of question? Uh, CARE is not associated with any group. It doesn't support terrorism of any kind. Uh, we've issued many statements condemning terrorism. Um, it's just, uh, but there is uh, an ongoing uh, smear campaign against uh, American Muslim groups and leaders uh, by those who don't don't want to see Muslims have a voice in the society and this is one of the tactics anytime a Muslim leader gains prominence or a Muslim group gains prominence uh, they're smeared as being supporters of terrorists or soft on terrorists or refusing to condemn terrorists so you know this is par for the course and I guess it's just life in the big city back to your calls from the third party line Honolulu good morning and thank you for waiting um, yes actually I have a couple of comments some of the callers are just have ridiculous statements to say to you and i apologize for americans feeling that way um my husband currently serving overseas 
on a ship deployed because of enduring freedom. I don't feel sorry for people that are going to be rounded up if they're illegally in our country. My husband and many other service people have been taken away and away from their families during the holidays and put into a foreign situation under hostile fire, and luckily he's on a ship and not out actually on the ground, but they are away from family and away from friends, and if you truly do believe in America and you believe in all the rights and freedoms, then you should be willing to defend it, and if defending that, you give up a few days or a few hours of your time by answering some questions, then you should do so, and if you have a problem with doing so, you shouldn't be in this country and you have something to hide. And I don't think that anybody should be rounded up individually, but our military men and women have been to defend this country. And if it takes a little bit of your time, then you should give it. And, and of course, they took notes to do that and defend our country, and that's their prerogative. And I'm proud of all of those people, but Muslim, it doesn't, I don't even care. It doesn't matter about religious beliefs, and I, it's sad that so many religions cause so many wars, but it truly is at this point in our history a sad state of affairs when people are going to cry. Any other country, if there's the same situation was going on, they'd pick them up, round them up, and they wouldn't. It would there would be no ble- bleeding hearts saying, "Sorry, you shouldn't shouldn't do this." You know, defend your rights. If we travel outside of our country, our constitution does not protect us. I don't see why a foreigner should be con- protected by our constitution. They're not citizens. Thanks for the comment. From the Democrats line, we'll go to Denver. Good morning to you. Good morning. Hi. I have a question, Mr. Ibrahim. Hello? Yes. Uh, well, he said that Turkey is an undemocratic country because women who wear the hair scarf cannot teach anything in the university. They can't even uh, attend university. Yeah, but it's just not true because, like, when you go to mosque in Muslim world, you cannot wear a bikini or you cannot go with naked. Every place they have rules and regulations. Mm-hmm. This is not related with democratic or undemocratic issues because this is what the set it up the rules with the secular system in Turkey, mm-hmm. education we have. And of course we cannot go to university with bikini or with the headscarf, which is well, I hesitate to uh, compare the headscarf to the bikini, and the, it's like in this country, um, it, everyone has the right, for instance, in the workplace to religious accommodation unless it creates an undue hardship on the employer. And I think that same standard could apply worldwide. What kind of hardship, what kind of negative impact could the mere wearing of a headscarf have uh, for a university student in Turkey? It, it's just anti-religious bigotry that goes on in Turkey. If you've just joined us, we are talking with Ibrahim Hooper, who is the communications director with an organization called the Council on American-Islamic Relations. It's been around since 1994. He is one of the founding members of this organization, and we're talking about the issue of the deportation of Middle Eastern immigrants. New action by the Justice Department announced earlier in the week. Our next call comes to us from New York City. On the Republican line, good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me first of all disagree with the, not the last caller, but the one before that when she said uh, immigrants shouldn't have constitutional rights or, or alien, um, aliens shouldn't have constitutional rights. Constitution is for human rights, not just Americans. Uh, but in any event, uh, I have to disagree with you with the position you're taking essentially that we shouldn't be looking more closely at Muslim Americans or Middle East, I'm sorry, Middle Eastern Muslims. Uh, that's nonsense. We're at war with groups that are predominantly, vastly more Middle Eastern Muslims than any other group. Uh, the, the terrorist acts that have been committed against us are being perpetrated by Middle Eastern Muslims. Um, you keep also saying <coughs> Muslim Americans or Arab Americans, that's not who's being targeted in most of this. Um, the people, the detain, excuse me, I'm sorry, the detainees uh, are all either in violation of immigration law or have actually committed felonies. The people who uh, were, were trying to find Actually, like, we don't know what uh, much about the detainees to make that determination. They're not releasing uh, those kinds of facts. There's not a single instance yet of, of anyone claiming they were detained without some sort of legal basis. Oh, no, I can and bring you many instances of that. We get them all the time. Of, of people, fine, bring a lawsuit. I, I, I mean, I haven't seen one credible piece of evidence that anyone who's being detained right now is being detained solely because they're a Middle Eastern Muslim. And, and they are not in any violation of any immigration laws. Uh, the, the last thing, the, the, the voluntary, uh, asking people to come in and voluntarily uh, talk to, to uh, authorities. 
I have no problem with that either. Uh, we, we're taking political correctness to an, mm-hmm. a, a ridiculous extreme when we say that we ought to be looking at everyone equally, even though we know that the terrorist groups are Middle Eastern Muslims. They well, are not- let me give you a profiling scenario. You have three people that you can profile. Richard Reed, John Walker, and the Muslim Arab American Secret Service agent. Now, according to the unwritten rules of profiling, which one are you going to profile? You're going to profile the only one who's going to be of benefit to the safety of an airplane, and the other two are going to get a pass. So, I mean, profiling isn't effective. Uh, it doesn't work, and it, and it creates a false sense of security that leads you to ignore other means that are effective. For instance, baggage matching on airlines. It's difficult to do. It's time-consuming. Airlines don't want to do it. So instead, they t- take the easy way out and do profiling that doesn't work. Next call, Arlington, Virginia. Good morning. You're on C-SPAN. Hi. How you doing today? Um, I'm just calling because I, I've been listening very carefully, and I'm defending this gentleman because... Thank you. I hope somebody does. Okay, look, <laughs> because I'm just trying to say this very clearly. After Oklahoma City bombing, we didn't round up all the militias. After Waco, we didn't go out and round up all the militias. Um, um, when Sinn Shin- Féin, they have bombs and things of, of that nature over there in Ireland, we don't go up and round off are the Irish people because we know it's not right and we just recently we had a case in Los Angeles uh, where the Jewish Defense League was going to bomb a mosque and an Arab American legislator Uh, we haven't profiled middle-aged Jewish guys which I don't think we should uh, but it just shows you uh, the difference in approach uh, for different instances I agree with you 100% I just wanted to call in and say that so please keep up the good work thank you More emails. First of all, for our guest, Mr. Hooper, please be kind enough to stop using the term Arab American for those who are targeted for deportation. Not one is an American. They are criminals who have been ordered deported by the courts. Facts are facts. A real American would never defend these criminals, but would help to find them and get them out of this country. Well, that kind of falls into the uh, America, love it or leave it category. And I mean, again, these are emotional times. We get these kinds of messages all the time. I I will admit that many of our positions are not popular, but defending civil rights is often unpopular. It was unpopular uh, in the beginning of the civil rights era for African Americans. It was unpopular for, for Japanese Americans. It's often not the majority opinion, but that doesn't stop us from defending civil liberties. Another email, and by the way, if you send us an email, if you can tell us where you're from, that would give us some perspective on uh, what part of the country you are emailing us from. This from a viewer who says, can you tell us when and where CAIR officially and publicly condemned the atrocities of September 11th? Where is the record of your condemnation? Well, people can go to our website, uh, www.cair-net.org, and the condemnations are there. I mean, in fact, uh, as the events were unfolding on September 11th, I was uh, drafting the statement of condemnation in anticipation of of this kind of thing, uh, recalling the uh, incident in Oklahoma City. Uh, And I was uh, drafting at our offices near Congress as uh, they were saying that a plane was headed towards Congress. Uh, So uh, every American Muslim organization has condemned it, condemned it repeatedly, condemned it in the strongest terms without qualification. And sometimes people don't want to hear that. And uh, I I think we've done our, our duty in terms of condemnation of terrorism. Our guest represents the Council on American Islamic Relations, and again, their website has been hyperlinked today to C-SPAN's website, as we do when we have guests from various organizations on the program. Our web address is www.cspan.org. Our next call comes to us from Sarasota, Florida, on the Democrats' line. Uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for C-SPAN. Uh, Mr. Hooper, I have a direct question for you. Has your council been investigated? Uh, not to my knowledge. Well, in I fact, hope- in fact, we meet with uh, Justice Department, State Department, White House officials, uh, any number of officials on almost a weekly basis. If uh, somebody had a complaint about our counsel, I'm sure they would have brought it to our attention. Right. Yeah. Um, your uh, introduction said your funding, and that's pretty much basically what my question was. But my other thing, too, is, sir, we are a free and friendly nation. We don't go around bombing other countries. Uh, we have... Uh, reason to believe that uh, Osama bin Laden did this twice, once back in 1993, 
and now in 2001. Uh, so we have every right to profile Middle, e Middle Eastern people. We, my sister just moved and is living with someone in England. And prior to her getting her visa through the consulate, she was deported and, 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 and was looking at not being able to get into England. But because she is not a terrorist and a, and a, and a good person, she was able to re-enter and, and now is living uh, in England. So when people that are here illegally, that are not paying taxes, um, scatter, and we're not able to find them, we have every right to profile Middle Eastern people. We're not profiling them um, for hostile reasons. We're just looking at them to make sure that they're not going to cause any, you know, any future terroristic acts. Well, it, it's always tempting to use these kinds of methods in a time of crisis, uh, but I don't think it upholds American values of fairness and due process. And again, I think when we look back on this, it, it won't be something we're proud of. Our guest earned his master's from the University of Minnesota, and he is, as we said earlier, one of the founding members of the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Next call for Ibrahim Hooper comes to us from Denver. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Can you hear me? We sure can. Yes. Yes, sir. I'd like to talk about the, uh, <clears throat> the bodyguard of our president, that gentleman who was kicked out of the airplane. Now, you know what a bodyguard of the president is? That means that guy's submit his life to protect the president like young blood did with uh, uh, Johnson. You remember that? During the assassination of Kennedy in 1963. Okay. We don't know even what his name is, okay? Now, could you give me an example why? Because he had a book, whatever it is, okay? Why don't we accept the fact, why don't we mention the fact that there's an Arab American, okay, who is willing to give his life who is trusted by the president and his wife to protect him, okay? Thank you. I'm not sure what the question was on that one. <laughs> we'll go on to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Good morning to you. Good morning. Oh, you can hear me? Okay. You sure can. Turn the volume down. That would eliminate okay. the echo. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Hi. First of all, I'd like to say um, to the brother Ibrahim, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, and to your host, I would like to say hi. Um, Hello. I don't have a question. I just want. I don't have a question. I just wanted to, you know, comment on the gentleman that I think the two calls before. Um, he was saying something about, you know, the bombings in um, Oklahoma and the bombings. There were some other bombings. Up, I, I forgot where, but you know, and no one like did anything about that. And I'm a young Muslim female living in America. And I had, like, some racial profiling, you know, um, like, you being, being as though I'm Muslim. And some things had happened to me and um, <clears throat> some things that were said. And, you know, and, and um, I was just like, you know, I, I really didn't pay any attention to it because I know that I'm American, but I'm Muslim and I love my religion. And I just want to make that, you know, I just want to note that. And, I mean, it's just like... I don't know why, you know, it's just, you know, we just can't have, like, world peace and, you know, and Muslims can just, you know, we can practice our religion just, you know, peacefully and, you know, um, you know, safely without, and, and I, I don't know about anybody that's, like, um, foreign or if they over here le illegal or whatever, but um, I just say, you know, I, I thought that America, you know, was for the land of, you know, the land of the free or, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know what the big fuss is. I, I just think that everybody should just live peacefully and just live out their lives, you know? Thank you, Carl. Yes. I, I want to make a point. Uh, sometimes we end up talking about negative things uh, quite often. But it should be known that America is one of the best places uh, to be able to practice the faith of Islam. We're free here to, to be Muslim as we aren't in many parts of the Muslim world, as we uh, talked earlier about Turkey or Tunisia or Algeria or places like this. Um, it's very difficult to practice your faith. Uh, so. We have to give America its due that it's a land of religious diversity. Um, there are complications for any people of faith, whether you're Christian, Jewish, or Muslim, but at least you can practice your faith openly and freely. So what do you tell the Justice Department, who is looking at the events of September 11th, looking at other alleged links to terrorism by those of uh, Middle Eastern and Arab descent, 
and them trying to figure out how they can prevent something like this from happening in the future. Where do they start? Well, I think they, they need to work with the Muslim and Arab American communities, and they're doing that. For instance, in a, a week or so, there's a community forum with Justice Department officials, EEOC, and other officials to discuss these kinds of issues. We've met with the community relations people, with the Department of Justice, and we're trying to work through the situation so that there isn't that apprehension, there isn't that suspicion of government uh, law enforcement agencies when they come and want information from the community because if someone has information about some uh, criminal activity they should c feel free to come forward and not feel intimidated. And how do you resolve the concern that you've been hearing from our callers who say these folks are here illegally they have no rights? Yeah well, uh, again even if you commit a crime in this country you have rights. Uh, and there's always the Constitution to protect the rights of everyone and the Constitution... Even non-Americans? Uh, I'm not a constitutional scholar, but that's my understanding that the, uh, that the Constitution applies to everyone who's in the United State, States, not just uh, citizens. Next call, Queens, New York, on the Democrats' line. Good morning. Good morning. I'd just like to say, uh, I like to uh, Wa alaikum Bupa. salam. I would just like to say that people need to uh, read about Islam and not propaganda, but read, go back years, go through uh, encyclopedias, and really learn to know Islam, because Islam is the religion of peace, and that's how I feel from the heart. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, we've seen a tremendous growth in, uh, in the interest in Islam uh, since the whole horrific events of 9-11. And that may account for the fact that the uh, opinion of Islam has gone up with the majority of Amer Americans despite those events. Our last call for our guest comes to us from Cleveland on the Republican line. Good morning. Hi. Uh, most of the opinions uh, I see here are two extremes. I'm a U.S. citizen of Indian descent, and I was totally outraged when Indian people were taken off the planes who were not even Muslim in the beginning when this thing happened. However, as I look at the situation, uh, Mr. Hooper, do not, uh, don't you agree that people who are without status here illegally, who are illegal aliens, should be deported, how can they have yeah, rights? The, the question isn't whether they should be deported. The, the question is whether there should be selective uh, uh, prosecution for deportations. And we, we believe anyone who violates the law should uh, suffer the penalty of the law, but you shouldn't uh, uh, prosecute these things based on race and ethnicity. Another email from a viewer who says, quote, it remains to be seen whether the government will only go after Arab persons who have overstayed their visas. But for the guest to use the example of only going after lawbreakers of one ethnic ethnicity is pure spin, not to mention when he said that the Secret Service agent had fi filed out the, uh, filled out the paperwork several times, leaving out the fact that, according to news reports, he admitted making errors which is also convenient spin. No, actually, uh, these inconsistencies that American Airlines talks about are, uh, were actually things like, oh, they couldn't read one copy because it was a carbon copy. Well, you know, so fill it out again. Or there was a signature missing. Well, they had him for 90 minutes. Have him sign the form. I think w it was clear that no matter what he did, he wasn't going to get on that plane. And the whole event was triggered by the discovery of the book on Middle Eastern history history and his Arab and Muslim name and his Middle Eastern appearance and that's what we object to. When all is said and done again the initial reports saying that the Justice Department looking at between five to six thousand young men ages 18 to 35 who are here illegally how many do you think will actually be deported? That's hard to say. It, it, uh, it depends on how many they can find and how many they can uh, reach. I mean, there's, like they said, 300,000 people of that same status here in America, and they've been here for some time, so it may be difficult to find these people. Ibrahim Hooper, who is at the Council of American Islamic Relations, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. There is a new report out in this publication called Health Affairs that says the cost of getting sick is going up if you're at hospitals or doctors. We'll learn more about that with Samuel Goldrich, who is with Congressional Quarterly. You're watching C-SPAN's Washington Journal. It's Thursday, January 10th.